the State of Israel has pursued um, a long, a long standing plan of erasure of Palestinian life, Palestinian identity over the land that Israel claims being for the Jews and only for the Jews. And uh, we are in the face of this, Palestinians, Israelis who stand against occupation and apartheid, and all others who feel uh, really offended by how Israel treats the Palestinian as a unwanted encumbrance, as a, security, as a permanent security threat. And uh, we are left bare hands fighting against this injustice, but it's one system. Gaza crisis has become a global crisis, and we see, we have seen Western countries crushing the fundamental freedoms, freedom of expression, freedom of association, the right to protest of their own citizens in order to defend what Israel is doing. And let's put things in context. Israel, there is nothing to justify the, the violations, the crimes that it, Hamas, the Hamas-less attacks have resulted into against Israelis. No. But there is a context. This didn't happen in a vacuum, as uh, uh, Secretary General Antonio Guterres has said. And in the face of all this, you have, on the one hand, a humanity who cannot stomach anymore the killing of uh, civilians. There are 42,000 people who have been killed, including 17,000 children, 700 of whom were babies. So this is, this is the reality, and I think it's a call for humanity. It doesn't matter. I mean, I don't distinguish the life of Israelis and Palestinians. For me, they're all humans, and they all deserve to, life, to live in peace and dignity. So we have this reality. The international justice system, which is powerfully moving this year, for the first time, we have seen Israel brought before the International Court of Justice with the charge of committing acts of genocide by South Africa, a country which has liberated itself from the yoke of 300 years of colonialism, the last 50 of which marked history as apartheid. And, uh, and the ICC requested to issue arrest warrants against Hamas leaders, two out of three of them have been killed by Israel, and uh, two Israeli leaders. So there is a move of international justice. There is a move of humanity on the ground. What resists? It's power. It's power. And again, I think that this is why the, the second element, the second reflection I wanted to bring is that I do believe that if there is one group globally which has comprehended what is at stake, and it's sort of pushing for a principled response, is youth. The young people who are more globalized than ever, much more than my generation or your generation, Paolo, they understand how connected social justice, climate justice, fighting against um, the, a, a system which is controlled by multinationals like the lobby of the army and the, the military industry, they see the connection and they stand in solidarity with the Palestinians and with the Israelis who want an, a state which is no longer an apartheid state. They want decolonization, doesn't matter how little they are. I also think that the, Israelis, the Israeli society is too hurt too traumatized and too indoctrinated to see what they're doing. But again, we have these two seismic shifts, international justice and the youth movement, which is pushing for a change. The International Court of Justice recognizing that the occupation is unlawful, that Israel has uh, pursued, in all but words, settler colonialism. And it says it is to be dismantled. 
the highest court of justice in the world has said the occupation is to go, the settlements are to go, uh, and Israel should make reparations to the Palestinians. This idea of a state for the Jews should be unpacked. Between the river and the sea, there are over 6 million Israeli Jews and over 6 million Palestinians. 5 million, 5 million Palestinians live under military dictatorship headed by Israel without rights. What's going to happen to them in order to realize a Jewish majority? Where are they going to go? It's extremely racist to say that they should go to other Muslim countries. Indigenous people, for indigenous people, the land is who they are, not the place where they live. And they don't move across l l like borders because of religion. This is their land. Why should they, they be kicked out? So you see, it's, it's so racist what for many Western states it's normal. But again, we have a lot of work to do in our own constituencies and in Europe. Europe, and I'm, I, I say that more strongly in a country like Portugal, Europe needs to do, deal with its colonial amnesia. 500 years of colonialism have marked our identity, our DNA, the way we look at the world. And if we do not understand that, we cannot comprehend the way how are dealing with the Palestinians, but also with the migrants, with the refugees, with the global south, is so unbalanced, unequal, and arrogant. The Arab world is more divided and fragmented than ever. But again, there is a disconnect there between the ruling class and the people. I can tell you, the people are with the Palestinians in greatest solidarity. Um, the Arab region needs to rediscover its connection with the Jewish people. It's fundamental. And it's something that I see in Tunisia, where there is a very advanced human rights community who's saying, can we stop this animosity? It's not a war between the Jews and the Muslims or the Christians. It's not a war even between the Israelis and the Palestinians. It's a, it's a war for humanity, justice, and decolonization. And the Israelis who stand against apartheid, against occupation, and against colonialism are allies. So this is something, a beautiful transformation that is slowly, slowly happening in the Arab region. There are many voices from the global south which have emerged, some from the global north, like Greta Thunberg, but I'm really, I'm really um, relieved to see so much inspiration for me coming from the Global South. The main voices that I hear today are from, from intellectuals from India, from South Africa, or from Cameroon, and, or Thailand. We are so Eurocentric. That we don't listen to them and still or latin america there is so much that comes from the struggle or of ordinary women and, and men and often children <laughs> that is, is is telling us that as arundati roy says a new world is coming and in the calm days i can hear her voice me too me too a new world a revolution is already happening but again, Paolo, we are not, um, I mean, it's a fight against the system. It's not just about Israel and Palestine. It's really against the system that has transformed us into forced consumers. And we, our, it seems that our life is uh, destined to produce, consume, and die. Produce, consume, and die without preserving what we have in this, in this, on this planet and without enjoying what we have in our life. So again, I do see a revolution is already happening, but it is to be understood as soon as possible by as many people as possible in order to become a movement for justice, correcting the deficiencies and the mistakes of the past. It's still possible. So this is why I tell to the young people learn from the past, particularly as Europeans. 
we need to learn what we have done to colonial people outside of Europe, what we have done to the Jewish people inside Europe in the, until 80 years ago, what we are doing today to the refugees and the migrants. We are five, I mean, this is a world that, that is feeding a war among the poor and the, and the decision makers and those who profit from the system remains untouched, unseen, intact. Learn, learn, learn as much as you can because knowledge today is subversive and this is the tool you have to protect yourself and to preserve the only opportunity of a peaceful future that remains to us.